Hello guys, today I will be going over inheritance like I promised in my last video. However, before I do, I want to touch a little bit into classes. So, what is a class? Well, in order to find that out, we need to first dig a little deeper. So, to sum it up, Python is an object-oriented programming language, and unlike procedural-oriented programming, it is based on objects. Objects are basically simply a collection of data, or variables, and functions that act on those data. And a class is basically a blueprint for an object, so to say. Basically, we can use a class to create many instances of objects that we can use in our code. Here's an example of a class. Let me just bring this up. All right, that I found online. In this case, the class is created by typing the class keyword and then the name of the class, which in this case is a person, and then the colon to define our functionality inside. Inside of a class, we do have something called a constructor, a constructor which allows us to initialize which means basically set certain objects inside the class to certain values as soon as the class is called. The way we create a constructor in Python is to create a def and an init function, which is a key function. It's built into Python. Every time you create a class, this init, con this init function will be called upon. The first object that's passed into the init function will always be the self, which refers to the class itself. And then we can create any other variable that we want to initialize. So in this case, since this person class has a first name and a last name, I created these variables in the uh, constructor, so then I can initialize them. And then inside the constructor, the first name, we created a, vari we created a variable for this class called self.firstName, which will be set to the first name that will be assigned to this constructor when the class is called. Same goes for the last name. And down here we have our method to our function that we have for this class. This function is to print the name of the person, and all it does is call upon the print function, where it will simply print the first name and last name assigned. Now the way this class works is, here we have a variable, we created x, and we assigned it to the person class, and we call this person with the names John for the first name. Self is basically referring to itself. so. The first value that we put in will go to the second value in the constructor. So the first name is John, and then the second name will go to the last name, which will be Doe. And then we go to type in x.printName. And this is basically calling our function that we have created inside the class. Since x is now assigned the class itself, all the functions of this class are now available to x. So x can call upon the printName function as it would. As if, as if it were, as, as I have been doing before, sorry. So when we do, it prints our name, John Doe. We can change this as well. Mary Sue, or Sir, just as an example. And now it will print out Mary Sue. However, since we only have a first name and a last name initialized in our constructor, we can, we can only put two values for a first name and a last name. If I were to create another name, so John again, this will give us an error. Yep. That's because there are not enough, basically the constructor does not have a place to put the third name John. It only has a place for the first name and the last name. But let's create another variable. Um, let's call this And we will initialize age self dot my age equals to age and then self dot my age so it will print out our age as well and um, let me just uh, change this let's say 30 it's not my actual age it's just a, an example and there we go it now prints out Mary Sue 30 and also, um, I think this is, this is fine as it is. All right, now it's time to move on to inheritance. So basically, inheritance refers to defining a new class with little or no modification from an existing class. Essentially, to, per to use this class I've created as an example, imagine this class is something called a base class. The class itself I will not change, but if I created a second class that doesn't have any of the data inside it like the first person class like the person class that I've created here has but it inherits the person class 
what that means is that it will inherit all the data the constructor the methods the functions the variables everything that's inside the person class will be transferred copied into a child class of the person class so the person class is the base class and its child that I will create will be able to use all the functions that are in the person class without ha me having to rewrite the functions in each child class so it inherits everything from the base class which is summed up here inheritance allows us to define a class that inherits all methods and properties from another class the parent class is the class being inherited from also called the base class the child class is a class that inherits from another class, also called a derived class. So here's basically the syntax of it. So we create our base class with a class keyword and then the name of our base class, which in this case is person. We have the body of our base class, which is all the functions and methods and variables inside it. And the derived class will also use the class keyword, but it will, it will also have a unique name. But inside the parentheses of the derived class or the child class, it will call upon the base class's name within the parentheses, implying that it is inheriting everything. Well, not everything, but what I want it to inherit from the base class. Then the body of the child class will be new functionality that may not be in the person class because the person may not need it, because other classes could also inherit from person, which the child class may have unique functions to itself, but other classes may not need it. There's also a thing called multiple inheritance, where you're creating a base class, it has its functionality, and you're creating a second base class, which has its functionality. So imagine a person class, and then there's a species class, and then a child class of both would be, it would, it would say the class keyword, it would have its name, but it would inherit from two base classes. So base class one, comma, base class two. Something like that could be class um, Adam, who inherits from person, as well as from human and then it would have its own unique functionality. Anyway, since I have the class person already done out, let me create a quick child class from it. Well, in case you're wondering, all this, all these notes that I got, I got them from python.org, a little bit from W3, and a little bit from the site called ProgramWiz. The links for all three will be in the description below. I am not working with them, they're not working with me, but they, they are a convenient source of information, so I am uh, using a few examples from them. Uh, for now. Basically, I'm learning Python as I'm creating videos, so it's, uh, it's very convenient. Anyway, in this case, I've created a new class called student, and it inherits from person. So, to show you an example of how it inherits everything from person, instead of assigning x a person class, I'm going to assign it a student, if I can spell correctly, a student class. And it is taking in the same variables for the constructor as the person class. This is because it inherits from person everything, including its constructor, as well as its function. So x.printName is calling the student, which in itself is referring from person. In a manner of speaking. Anyway. So I ran the code and it still works. Same result. Let me change it around a little bit more. John. Adams, it works, but it's not calling person, it's calling the student class. So this is an example, a very simple example of inheritance. Alright guys, so I went over the basic exam for inheritance earlier, where you would, you probably noticed that I used the pass keyword, instead of all the changes I've just made right now. Pass basically is a keyword that basically passes the compiler along, basically it doesn't do anything other than just tells the compiler, hey, just ignore whatever is here and then move on ahead. Anyways, I want to cover the init constructor in relation to how it works with the child class. So here I've created an init for the student class, and I decided to make some changes for the constructor for the student by adding in a fifth variable called location. I was doing some testing here, and I came across a few errors. For instance, in person, the init initializes three variables, first name, last name, and age. And the print name function is only set to work for those three variables. So I tried repeating the same steps, only to realize this kind of defeats the purpose of inheritance if I'm literally copying the previous code all over again, just to make any changes to the constructor work. 
one of the worst problems was that I do have to change the function and by, well, I have to create a new function called print info instead of print name and this function adds in the location as another variable to print and I ran it earlier and now it prints the location as well as the fourth variable however if I change the function back to name it does not print the, ver the location this is because print name is only defined in the person class, the base class. It's only set to print these three variables. Now, one way to get around the problem that I found earlier of repeating the same code is to call upon the same constructor of the person class to cover for any missing information that the new constructor class, the new init class that I've created, needs. So as you can see, I have the initialization code, these three lines commented out. They're commented out because I don't need them. Instead I have what is called I have a super constructor and it uses the keyword super followed by parentheses dot the constructor only calling in the first name, the last name and the age from the base class. What super does, the keyword is super is basically refers to the super class which in itself is another way of saying base class so when it when you're calling upon the super keyword this object will refer to anything that the current class is inheriting from so in this case super dot init this super function right now the super keyword right now is pointing to the constructor of the super class of student which is person and the constructor of the person class has the three variables and their initializations, which is the missing information that I needed to get the print info function done. Because for print info, I need self.firstName, self.lastName, and self.myAge. But first name, last name, and my age are not in the namespace of student, they're in the namespace of person. So super simply makes a copy of them and brings them to student without having to copy all of this. Now it's only three lines, it's not that hard to copy if I did it the hard way. But in the real world, when you're inheriting code, the base class would probably be polymorphic, which means it'll probably be built in a way that it can be used for multiple types of code, strings, integers, all while using the same functions and the same constructors, etc. So to work with a class like that, you would use the super class to inherit their constructors and their functions, and yes, you can use the super to inherit any function. The init itself is a function, even if it's a built-in function. I could use this to in to, I could use this to bring in print name, but it already does that since it's inheriting everything from the class. It's just when I change the constructor, the new constructor overrid the old constructor. So I had to bring an instance of the old constructor in here in line 14. And this is why this, the code now works, but I was not able to do that for print info. Actually, I might be able to. Hang on. I'm gonna make a quick cut in this editing and I will be back. Alright guys, so I tried to use the super keyword with the print name function. So I used super parentheses print name and assigned it to the variable base info. Then for my print info function, I made it print the base info, which was the same output for print name, plus my, my new variable called my location, which is my location. When I ran this, it gave me an error, which is why I had to add in the return keyword in line 8. So it has to return the print function from print name in order for the printed statement from line 8 to be stored into the variable base info. Now when I did that and I ran it, it worked, sorta, John Adams, H30, USA. Now the only problem that I can't seem to solve is it says none, and it breaks the statement into two lines. Now I've been looking at this for like 10 minutes, so not a lot of time. I'm sure if I research it further I could probably fix it, but since I'm recording right now I don't really have a lot of time. But the point being, yes, you can use the superclass to inherit functions, not just the constructor. And this way I don't have to rewrite the same function, print name, inside my new function, print info. I can just take the output of print name, save it into a variable, put the variable here, and then add in my new functionality, 
and print it. And the information did print. As for the nun here, I'm gonna work on that, work on fixing that. At a different time, I might make a video on how to fix that later on. But for the time being, I think this is good enough. Also, you don't have to save the output of the line 8 into a base info variable. You could just add this in here directly. And when you run it, it's... Oh, let me just comment this out. And it, it results the same thing. So yeah, this does save you a lot of effort in a real world example, where it's not just one function that you're inheriting, but you're inheriting hundreds, maybe thousands of functions, and you don't want to rewrite all of them. Using something like super print name is definitely a time saver, and it also solves a lot of errors that might come with copying so, so many repeated codes and functionalities. I mean, so many repeated functions and variables. So yeah, inheritance, this is one of the positives about inheritance that you can discover for yourself. Now in addition to this, you can add properties to a child class. Well actually, so I already did this. I've literally done this without even realizing. Yeah, instead of graduation year, I've already done this with location, so what else was I going to cover? Um, so I've added a parameter, already done that, added a new method, I've already sort of done that, but I'm going to do this anyways, because instead of inheriting functionality from the same method in person, this is an entirely new function altogether. Um, yeah, basically Python, the way Python interprets what is a function, I mean what is supposed to go inside your uh, classes and functions, is the spacing, so make sure you have um, at least four lines or one tab of space. Now, oh yeah, graduation year isn't there. So I'm gonna change this with the uh, location. No location, what? Oh, my location. There we go. Let me just uh, clear this out. Now, um, welcome the person to the country of. That makes more sense for the output. Okay, so instead of printing info, Let's just, let's just type in welcome. Not welcome, welcome. Now one thing to note is this new function welcome does take in all the information from person. However, this function is not inside person. Nor does it derive any information from person. Well, okay, it, it derives um, first dot self name and okay first name and last name, but it doesn't derive anything from the print name function. So this is an entirely unique function, which is unique only to student. It is not in person, though it is possible for person to inherit from its child. Inheritance works both ways, um, there's a function for that. I'm gonna make a, a little note on that in the end. But when we run this, yeah, the new function is called Welcome John Adams to the country of the USA. And the name is inherited from person whereas the location is inherited from the student. So this is a way you can create new functionality in your child classes that inherit data from both the new child classes as well as the original base class. Now, let me go over really quickly how inheritance works in reverse, how a base class could inherit data such as location from a student class or child class. And with that, I can create a function that could do something with that. Oh, just give me a sec. I'll be right back when, when I figure that out. Alright guys, so after some research, I did find a way to have it so that the class person can keep track of all child classes that are created, such that I could create a function in my person class that can access any new variables created in any child class, so that the person class could use it even though they're not defined in the person class. There is a way to do that, but it's a very, uh, it's not a simple way, it's not something I can just make in I can just add it to the end of this video in like a last minute thing. It's like a whole video in itself. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but while I was doing some research, 
I did find out that you don't necessarily need the super class if you're only inheriting from one class. Actually, you don't need, really need the super class to get access to the data in another class. You could simply call upon the class itself, person dot its constructor, and person dot the print name itself, basically accessing both the constructor and the function. I ran it, and it ran just fine. Which, this isn't really inheritance anymore, it's basically just calling a different class. Like, you could do this with any class, as long as the compiler has access to a class. For example, it's kind of similar to the import method I went over, but I would create another class that did not inherit from either person or student, and I would type in the name of that class, and then access a function from it. I could do that the exact same way I have it done it in line 19 exact same way, the name of the class, even if it's not inherited, and then just get the function. So this really isn't inheritance, but while I was looking for the way to reverse inheritance, and this is basically another way I found out. Well, I mean, I, I sort of knew, that, knew about this, but I didn't really include this, because it wasn't really related to inheritance, but yeah, it is a thing. However, one last thing I do want to go over is multiple inheritance through an example. Here's an example from program Wiz. Just gonna go over really briefly. A program is, I think the website's called. It's in the link. It's in the link below, so you guys can check it out. Well, let me just. Uh, okay, there's a couple of problems. Unnecessary. Yeah, unnecessary semicolon. I'm using an old version of Python, or maybe just not really using it. Anyway. So this one has. One, two, three, four, five. Five classes. Now here's the most base class, class animal. It has its constructor, and it has a basic function that prints whatever animal, like whatever animal that goes in the constructor is an animal. For example, if I were to call the class, um, hang on, let me just, uh, come on, don't freeze on me, computer. Let me just comment these out. Now let's just call in animal cat. It will ca call in the function to print out cat is an animal. It's basically calling the animal class and its function on line 3. And the cat value from whatever it's called in the constructor is sent in. So now we have a subclass or a child class of animal called mammal in line 5. Is that it, it has its own constructor which prints out the same thing except for mammal name instead of animal name and it has a different uh, string at the end so instead of saying is an animal it says whatever animal name you put in is a warm blooded animal so it's a mammal and then it has the same super class that inherits the original constructor from animal so if you were to type in mammal and whatever animal it would say the mammal but if okay if the Instead of both, both of them using the print function, if they were differently, if the both, if, ah, if the functions on line three and line seven were named differently, then I could call in the function in the animal class that's not in mammal, from mammal, and you know it'll work. Sorry about that. But yeah, now we have the third function, non-winged mammal, which does the same thing that mammal does. It has its own unique constructor, own unique statement, and then it inherits from the super of this, which is mammal. Now, interestingly, here we have a different child class of mammal. This one is called a non-marine mammal, but it also inherits from mammal, just like non-winged mammal. So both of these classes are both childs of mammal. And it does the same thing as non-winged non mammal does. Now finally, we have our last class, dog, which inherits from both non-marine mammal, this one, and it also inherits from non-winged mammal, the third one. It has its own constructor, it has its own print statement that's unique to dog, but just just like before, it has the same super, uh, the super function to call in the constructors of its base, but in this case it has two bases, but calling in super just once works both for both of them, so you don't have to create a second super dot in it for a different, for each base that it inherits from. It, you can just call it once and it'll do it for all of them. Now let me just uh, run this. Uh, 
some of you guys are cringing over how how I don't use keyboard short, shortcuts, but I'm, I'm gonna get used to that in a bit. Anyway. Okay, so now that we ran it, it wants to do dog. Dog has four limbs, I mean four legs. But then it also says dog can't swim, dog can't fly. This inherits from the functions of non-marine mammal and non-winged mammal. So non-winged can't fly, non-marine can't swim. But it's inheriting dog, the name dog, from the dog function that was called into these functions. Then it says dog is a warm-blooded animal and dog is an animal, which also applies to the base functions of the base functions of dog. So it goes all the way up the hierarchy. Basically the one super function in line 23 allows the dog class to call everything in its hierarchy all the way to the top, all the way to animal, and it can basically apply its name dog to all the functions, all the print functions throughout the hierarchy. <clears throat> and then in line 28, it does this with bat, but instead of calling the dog function, it's calling the specific non-marine mammal. Now non-marine mammal inherits from mammal and animal, but it is neither a child or a parent of non-winged mammal, so it's not going to call this at all. And dog is a child of it, so that's not being called either. So for bat, it only takes bat can't, it only outputs bat can't swim, it's a warm-blooded animal, and it's an animal. So only for, so only for non-marine mammal, as well as mammal and animal. So this was a simple example of how inheritance works with multiple classes being inherited from you can have multiple child classes of a single base class. Anyway, this isn't a super advanced example, it's basically, it's pretty much been simple for all my examples and videos so far. I'm not gonna go into, the, go into advanced topics until much later. And the way for a super class to inherit from a child class is to make it so that the child class, when it's called in its constructor, updates any new data that it has to the super class. So you would have to write in code for the child class when called in from a constructor or a function to update any information that's new, unique to it to its super class. And then the super class will then create a list of any function as any new functions its child its any new functions it chi its child classes have as well as it should have a list to keep track of each of its children. So that's a way of doing it. I'll go over that much later on, but yeah, this has been inheritance and in the next video I will go over packages and modules.